Maury, chew your food. God gave you teeth, use them. I'm saying mine for court on the cob. Why are you so anxious to get to school? Joey and me gonna practice jump shots for it open. Maury. Now, I don't mind you playing. Kids off. Learning comes first. I done my homework. I did my homework. Okay, so we all done our homework. Now, what's so important about learning? Because you can't make it if you're done. I told you better than that. You all saying you have to get an education to get anywhere. Right, but being smart and being dumb has got nothing to do with education. A lot of educated folks is dumb. Papa, you dumb or smart? Well, hey, I don't rightly know. I think maybe I'm smart, but without education, I've never been able to find out. So I had to work hard. Hard as hell. Hard the years I put in that steel mill. Now, I don't want none of you, not a one of you, to ever have to work that hard. I better off than a lot of people I know. Yes, I reckon so. Your mom and me, we survived pretty good on a lot of hard work and very little schooling. Now just think, think how much better it could have been with hard work and education. Either way, you keep talking about hard work. <laughs> You're right. You learn it. Use another guy. Yeah, but but nothing. Come on. Hey, man, you're in pretty good shape. I gotta stay in shape, man. I'm sure. Oh my God, it's another one. And you are the biggest of the bunch. What's the problem? It's like dancing with a sequoia tree. So I won't ask you to dance? <laughs> no offense, but thank you. May I? I don't know. What did you have in mind? You're very gentle. Shouldn't I be? Do you have any idea what it's like to dance with Billy? No, I don't, because I never danced with him. <laughs> I'm Dorothy Parsons. Hi, I'm Maury Stokes. And I'm sorry you're having a lousy time. Not really, but you fellas take some getting used to. There, how's that better? Mm-hmm. You live around here? No, New York. Are you a basketball player, too? How'd you figure that out? <laughs> Should I know you? I guess not. Well, aren't you any good? Well, I'll know more about that in a few months. I report to the Royals next week. What do you do? Uh, personnel work. Really? Where? McGraw Hill Publishing Company. I guess you'll take some getting used to also. Listen, we play the Knicks in New York next month. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I know you're a basketball fan. I'm not. I'll call you. I hope so.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to announce the player who has been selected by the sports writers of the United States as the outstanding rookie of the year in the NBA. And I know I speak for most of them when I say that this rookie may also be the outstanding player of the year. Big Mo, Maurice Stokes of the Royals. Thank you very much. Uh, I never expected anything like this to happen, so I want you all to know that um, it could not have happened without the help of all my great teammates. Right. It's all yours, Big Mo. Drive it off. Well, you better clear, clear the arena first. How's that? Because I don't know how to drive. <laughs> Anymore, and we're just not going to find a place to park this thing on the street. Well, I can't take it apart and take it upstairs with me, I can tell you that. Well, we have to find a place to store it. There's a garage nearby? A garage. What's the garage cost anyway? About 45 bucks a month. Are you joking? Uh uh. <laughs> <laughs> My apartment doesn't cost much more than that. I'm not paying 45 bucks a month for a car I can't drive. Well, I'll see you learn. I've already learned not to spend the money for something I have no need for, my friend. All right. Straight ahead up there. You're out of your mind. No, straight ahead up. Listen, now this car, brand new, what do you think it costs? What, 3500 Right. Yeah, straight ahead up there. <laughs> What's the mileage on this thing? Take a look. Ah, I gotta be honest with you. We set the mileage back too sometimes. But let me give you a tip. You set this thing back too far. Seven miles. You overdone it. Really? You should have left it at a couple of thousand miles. How much for the car? Well, let me see now. I can go maybe, uh, 2800 I can tell you where else you can go. <laughs> well, 29 Keep going. 3000 an outstanding expense of putting this thing back into shape. Would you believe I haven't had a minute of trouble with it? That's right, and he hasn't spent a nickel on it. Oh, no, you shouldn't neglect the car like that. I gotta be honest with you. Thirty-one hundred's the best I can do. Hey, wait a minute, man. You make us out a check for thirty-two hundred bucks before we get in the car and drive off, huh? You got a deal. Okay, thirty-two hundred. But you gotta tell me something. What's that? This car hot? Hot as a pistol. You got a registration? Yep. You can't tell it from the real thing, huh? Look at that. Huh? Now, I gotta be honest with you. We keep this thing quiet, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We won't tell a soul now. All right. I'll be back in a minute. Right. What the hell did you tell him was hot for? <laughs> It'll make them happy, you know what I mean? you will get more pleasure out of selling a hot car than a cold. That's very considerate, of it. Gentlemen. You know, if you were beautiful, it'd be great. Or if you were smart, that's very interesting. Or if you could cook up a storm, that's nice too. 
But you're all three. Too much? For me. Why? Because a fella must take a girl like you very seriously. Good. Then what's the problem? No problem. It's just that I gotta get my folks straightened out. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. And then I'm gonna ask you to be my lady. sandwich and a glass of milk. Now, just try and relax, sir. You're going to be all right. Radio ahead for an ambulance. Now we're exploring the possibility of brain injury. Did he have an accident? A fall? We all fall sometimes, but I don't remember Maury ever being injured. He didn't fall in last night's game. Perhaps an earlier game. There's often a delayed reaction in brain injury. What? Well, what's going to happen? We're doing everything we can to bring him out of this coma. Well, he'll make it, won't he? Well, he's a rugged fellow. That'll help. Does he have any family? folks live in Pittsburgh. Well, somebody ought to notify them. Dr. Stewart? Oh, yes. Would you like to take care of Mr. Stokes' personal effects? Sure. Good. Sign right here, please. Operator, would you give me information in Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. Thanks for calling me. Sure. How did they take it? Hard. I figured. But they're solid. That helps. How's Maury? No change yet. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jack Twyman. Mr. Twyman, could we talk with you? Certainly. been faced with anything like this. I know. It's rough. The doctor says Maury can't be moved. And we can't keep on running back and forth from Pittsburgh. I can't afford it. But Maury's got to be taken good care of. He will be. 
we got to be sure. I'd be glad to check on how things go and let you know. We don't mean to burden you. It'd be no burden, Mrs. Stokes. I live in Cincinnati and the season is over. Meantime, you try not to worry. Don't oh, worry. We won't fall apart. Good. And I will keep in touch with you. That's nice of you. dollars in a bank here in Cincinnati? Well, that ought to pay some bills. Yeah, but you see, no one can get at the money. Only Maury can do that. You talked to his folks yet this week? Yeah. Mrs. Stokes called me today when you went out shopping. He's coming in to see me tomorrow morning. It's Sunday. I guess that's his only free day. You miss Lisa's first day in church. Sure. What could I do? He never told me much about Maury. What kind of a guy is he? He's a great guy. I'm Jack Twyman. Oh, yes, Mr. Twyman. I'm Dorothy Parsons. I'm a friend of Maury's from New York. I could use a cup of coffee. How about you? Yes, thank you. To see him lying there like that, he's barely alive. But he is. How long can he go on like that? No one knows. They're doing everything they can. It seems horrible to think of this now, but who's going to pay for this? It must be costing a fortune. Maury's parents have bitten the bullet. They're extraordinary people. Yes. Do you know them? No, but I know Maury. I'm amazed at Mo. What? You've never been in a locker room, have you? Hardly. Well, you wouldn't believe some of the dialogue. Sometimes it sounds like a conventional Casanova. The locker rooms must be more fascinating than the games. If only 10% of that talk was on the level, those guys couldn't even crawl out on the court. Why are you amazed at Maury? That he could have a girl like you and not boast about it. That's a very nice compliment for Maury. It was meant for you. Did it ever occur to you that he might have some other girls to boast about? That thought has occurred to me. You going to stay here for a while? I would. If there was something I could do. If he just knew I was here. Do you have a job in New York? Yeah. I'm going to be on the road for about a week. Now, I'll be glad to call you when I get back and let you know if there's any change. I guess we're even. Even? 
Maury didn't boast about you either. I'm saying, blink once. If you can't say anything to me, blink twice. Celtics. Cincinnati Royals. Then you can hear and understand everything I'm saying. I'm the greatest basketball player that ever lived. You're the greatest basketball player that ever lived? You're also the most conceited basketball player that ever lived. You're conversation I've ever had. Hey, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Try to stay away till I get back, okay? But he seemed to understand every word I was saying. His mind is as clear as a bell. But except for his eyelids, it's impossible for him to do anything voluntarily. Well, uh, isn't there something you can do to restore his voluntary movement? Every muscle of his body would have to be taught to function, as if he had never had use of them before in his life. But could it be done? Theoretically. Therapist for every function of his body. Years of it. How much would it cost? My guess is that it would be close to a hundred thousand a year. Let's get started. I guess you're Mr. Twyman. I'm Rosie Sanders. Nice to meet you, Nurse Sanders. You gonna be around much? Some. Then start calling me Rosie. My, my, you're a big one, aren't you? Don't you blink those flirty eyes at me. I'm old enough to be your mother. The shape he's in, he'll take whatever he can get.
to. Mm. It's late. What happened? Well, there's a lot to do. Getting it settled. Making arrangements. Mm. Is everything all right? I guess. Get some sleep. Hi. Uh-huh. What would you think of having an addition to the family? Have you forgotten? We'll have one in a couple of months. Well, how about another one? <laughs> Your timing's a little off, isn't it? Yeah. You're making a passer, aren't you? Sort of. You said something about an addition to the family. Mm-hmm. What did you have in mind? Maurice. Nice to see you. Come in. May I take your coat? Well, Mr. Twyman, how are you? I'm fine. I'd be even better if you'd call me Jack. <laughs> okay, then, Jack. We sure appreciate your coming to see us and all your calls about Maury. Yeah, meant a lot to us. I thought it was time we had a little talk and not on the telephone. Sit down. Thank you. You know, Maury is in for a long siege at that hospital. Yeah. Bringing him back will take a lot of time and money. Well, we've handled it this far, and I guess some way we'll keep on doing what has to be done. I'm afraid not. To do what has to be done will cost almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. A hundred thousand. Now, that's why I wanted to see you. Now, please don't be offended. But I don't see how you can cope with this sort of thing. There's $3,000 left of the mortgage money. Mm -hmm. That won't last a month. Maury has 8000 in the bank, and that's another couple of months. And then what? Money has to be raised. For quite some time. Can you do that? Jack, I'd give my life if I could say I could. We could. But we can't, and you know it. Could. But I'd like to try. You? How? First of all, we have to get that money out of Morris' bank account. Then additional funds have to be raised and decisions made for Maury. Now, I realize that you can't move to Cincinnati, but I live there. If you would agree, I think the best way is for me to go to court and become Maury's guardian. You mean you want to adopt Maury? I guess you could put it that way. And then I'll just do the very best I can. Why? Why what? Why would you have to do a thing like this? As I can figure, you and Maury weren't close friends. We were teammates. Yes, but teammates and friends is different. What you're talking about is... Well... Ain't you got a family? I sure do. Wife and one and a half children. We're having our second in a few months. Are you a rich man? Had a $3,000 raise this year, and we celebrated for two days. Does that answer your question? Seems to me like you've got all you can do to take care of your own. Tell me. Honest. Why would you offer to take on something like this? Because I can't think of any other way. 
Do we have a deal? I'll be in touch. Good afternoon, Maurice. I'm Dr. Walker. He's your coach now, okay? I just gave him two hours of practice. Now it's your turn. Maurice, we're going to put you through some exercises to tone your muscles up. But we can't accomplish much unless you help us. I want you to understand one thing clearly. There is nothing wrong with any of your muscles. There is also nothing wrong with your brain. Now, Maurice, our problem is to reestablish a connection between your brain and your muscles. It's as if you've forgotten how to make yourself move. You know how it is when you try to remember somebody's name or something that happened in the past. You think hard trying to restore that piece of information. Now, what we're going to try to do is help you remember how to move. Do you understand that? It's going to take a long time. And it's going to hurt. Are you ready for that? Okay. Good. Now that hurt, didn't it? Now we're going to keep on doing that with every part of your body. Trying to induce the pain you felt. Because when you felt that pain, you instinctively reacted against it. You didn't have to will your reaction. It's, uh... It's like when your hand touches a hot stove, you instinctively pull it away without thinking. Now, as we continue to do this, and you continue to react, the communication between your brain and your muscles will gradually be restored. Well, they gave you a pretty good workout, didn't they? You going to watch the game tonight? Are you going to watch the game tonight? Sure, that's it. Good lie here on your butt, taking it easy. While we're breaking ours. How about giving me a massage in the locker room tonight? you break your button, I just might do that. But not laughing at. That might be nice, Judy. All those handsome fellows in the locker room. <laughs> Rosie, you're a dirty old woman. I'm not so old. <laughs> I'm Miss Harris, your speech therapist. Well, when you watch the game tonight, in case the picture isn't too clear, I'm the guy scoring all the points and looking great. You don't need to score any points. We'll know who you are by your big head. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be okay. Yeah, no problem. Jack, how'd you do that? Uh, I went down to the courthouse and they gave me a bunch of papers. Yeah, but taking legal custody of somebody is a... Uh, pretty complicated procedure. What do you know about things like that? Didn't you have a lawyer? Lawyers get fees. It wasn't so tough. You know, I just asked questions till I got answers. And you made out all the papers yourself? This may come as a shock to you, but I do know how to read and write. Damnedest thing I ever heard. Has he read my letters? Sure. Any reaction? Well, he can't react. Well, hasn't he made any progress? Some, but it's so slight you can hardly notice. Has he had any visitors? He hasn't wanted to see anyone, even the guys on the team. I hope he wants to see me. When he knows you're here? Of course he will. Hey, uh, I'd better prepare him. What a picnic you've got. Yeah. Hospital food is no picnic. Well, I never heard you complain. 
Well, that's because I just serve it. I don't eat it. I have a surprise for you. Dorothy Parsons is outside. She flew in from New York to see you. Maybe you didn't understand. Dorothy is here to visit you, okay? You know, it's pretty damn nice of her to come all this way. I'll bring her in. You mean to tell me that? She's standing right outside this door, and you refuse to see her. I can't just send her away like that. Hey. Let me bring her in for one moment. I guess I can understand it. If it were reversed, I'd probably feel the same way. Sooner or later, he'll reach a point where it won't be so painful for him. You let me know, won't you? Meanwhile, I'll just keep writing to him. Sure. It's not easy. Do you want some help? He's in physical therapy. I do feel better. He'll give it a hell of a fight. How's it going, Big Jack? Hey, the proud papa. How are you? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Well, I don't know. How's he? Never knew you had so many fans. I don't. Now that's what I call fan mail. I don't understand. How come? I read about it in the sports call. So did I. And I'm stingy. Go to sleep. Why not? I have an idea. He's been waiting for you. The plane just got in. What's wrong? I think he has something to show you. 
You do? All right. What? Ah, uh, you gotta be kidding. It's two o'clock in the morning. And I I played three games this week. I just crawled off an airplane with my butt dragging, and you got me here standing watching you picking up a spoon. Picking up a spoon? That's not the greatest act I've ever seen. Well, I'm gonna get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah? Yes, I'd like to speak to somebody about a typewriter, an electric typewriter. No, I don't want the sales department, miss. You see, I don't want to buy one. What I'd like is for IBM to give me one. I know that's a little unusual. Miss, who's the president of your company? I'm getting a little tired of you blinking at me all the time, so if you want to say anything, write me a letter. Oh, Mr. Twyman, I'm Milton Kutcher. Oh, hi. Uh, could we have a little talk? Well, I, Mr. Uh, Kutcher, Milton Kutcher. Mr. Kutcher, I have to hit the shack. I have an early flight in the morning, okay? Well, I understand, but I think we should talk. I've heard you've been having trouble setting up a benefit game with Stokes. That's right. Every player in the league has volunteered to appear, and the problem is to find the league. Should be plenty of those around. Sure, there are. But the overhead eats you up. By the time you get finished paying for the arena, the staff, the insurance, promotion, programs, and all the other things that go along with staging an event like that, there's nothing left. Well, how much would you expect to clear from a game? Ten, maybe fifteen thousand. But there's no way for that overhead. And uh, three thousand seats at five dollars a seat would do it? Sure. But well, that's gross, not net. Oh, that would be net. 
Mr. Ketcher, do you own an arena? No. I have a hotel in upstate New York, uh, in Monticello. Well, how could we play a game like that in a hotel? Uh, you leave that to me. Let me ask you something else. Even if you cleared the 15000 wouldn't you still have a lot more money to raise? Sure. You see, we get a couple of thousand every month from workman's compensation. Huh? Two coffees, please. Uh, no, thanks. Does that cover everything? No. I still have to raise another five or six thousand every month. How? Oh, fundraising drives with various organizations, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, most of these guys, the press, they've been great. Um, there was an article in one of the papers here in New York, and uh, $3,000 came in. And after the piece in a Boston paper, a family wrote me and said, well, they spend $500 on Christmas every year, and they enclosed a check for $500. Nice, nice. Right. And then Sports Illustrated, the papers in Los Angeles, Chicago, Philadelphia, you know? To meet my budget, I contact one of them, and they run a column, and people respond. Maybe there's hope for the human race. I guess this game would have to be held after the season's over. Yeah. Okay. Well, that gives us a few months. Here. I want you to write me exactly everything you need. And I'll take it from there. Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> You're a hell of a one to ask that question. Welcome back. How's it going, Rosie? <laughs> Oh, I've only one complaint. He's wearing me out. Oh, come on. You're tougher than that. I've never run into anyone like him. He's got to be doing something every minute. He gets back from therapy. You think he'd just lie there on that bed and rest? Not him. He's got to be working at something. He's been at that typewriter ever since you left. Well, Morning, that's... noon, and night. That's good for him. What's he writing? A letter. Who okay. too? You. And you'd better take a look at it. It took him a whole week to write it. Shut him up. You've got what? A thousand cases? Well, are you sure they're for me? Jack Twyman, right. What am I going to do with them? Okay, I'll be down. Thanks. Damnest thing I ever heard, Count. Sound Cannery has sent a contribution for Maurice. A thousand cases of tomato sauce. Oh, <laughs> Well, that ought to come in handy. We all live forever. Yeah, but it's piled up in a warehouse down by the railroad yard, and if I don't get it out of there, I have to pay storage. What are you going to do? What I'm not going to do is pay storage. I'm going to have to find a grocery chain or something like that and sell it. Uh, you promised to take Lisa to the zoo this afternoon. I know. I'm sorry. I have to unload this stuff. Well, all of a sudden, I'm peddling tomato sauce. Aren't they beautiful? I guess so. <laughs> They're funny, too. <laughs> I wish Daddy were here. Well, I'm sure he wishes he were, too. If he did, he'd be here. You really couldn't help it today, Lisa. He had to do something for his friend. I don't like his friend. Would you like to go see the lions? I don't care. 
something else I think you better see. Some, some more animals? No. A thousand cases of tomato sauce? <laughs> All I needed was four tons of spaghetti. <laughs> what did you do with it? Oh, I peddled it. And I'm a pretty damn good peddler. I got $4,700 from Kroger's. Well, you had me worried there for a while. I thought that maybe next week I'd get paid off in tomato sauce. <laughs> ah, ah, I hate to ah. intrude on all this big business, you know, but we've got a foot to go. to see you. Oh! Look, Mo. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. She's a great girl. Now, what the hell she was doing with you in the first place, I'll never know. But she's been pretty damn patient. And I'm running out of excuses why she can't see you. I'm going to tell Dorothy to come in next Friday as soon as she finishes work in New York. Oh. Yes. What are you afraid of? That you don't look so good? Let me tell you something. You were never any beauty. She'll be here Friday. Did you have a good time at the zoo? Oh, yes, Daddy. It was super. Okay. Now, yeah. sing Melancholy Baby. I 
Yeah, I'm fine. Fine. Thank you for your letters. You're lucky, lucky, I want to ask you to dance. damn therapy in that hospital. I'm not surprised. You know, there hasn't been a moment when he hasn't been cheerful and hopeful. Don't you believe it? It's true. No one has seen him falter, even for a second. No one has seen him because he wouldn't allow it. But he has. Alone, at night. There have been those moments when he's wondered and he's doubted. And he's agonized and he's cried. Maury? Cried? I couldn't ever love a man who couldn't cry. And I heard from Mill Kutcher this morning. He's planning to stage the game three weeks from Saturday. You gonna play? You bet you. And I'm probably gonna be high scorer. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> There's something I've been wanting to ask you. 
And I, I wanted to wait till you could talk a little. You know, the evening they brought you into the hospital, they asked me to hold your personal belongings. And I've been holding on to, to this. What do you want me to do with it? It is yours, isn't it? What do you want me to do with it? Uh, you must have bought it for something, for someone. Tell me what to do. Uh, you didn't buy it to sell it. You must have had something on your mind. It was two thousand dollars. Sir, I made my Come on, Mo. I'm not prying. I just want to know what to do. Oh, I hear you. Okay, Rockhead. I'll see you later. to find out. <laughs> With no clothes on, he's butt naked. <laughs> Knocking on all these doors. <laughs> he, knocked, he knocked on Francis' door. <laughs> Francis said he would let him in. <laughs> and then the house detective uh, came and carried him away. <laughs> something in Morris' pocket the night they took him to the hospital, and I've been holding it. Now, he doesn't know I'm doing this, but I've feeling this was meant for you, that you should have it. Okay. See you tomorrow? I have a fundraising lunch. See you next week. Oh, uh, Jack, I want to thank you for letting me have this. Now you can sell it. 
Are you sure? Yes. Good morning. We're all ready. I hear we're going for a ride. We? Oui. I'm driving. Uh... That's all I need. A warm driver. Well, don't knock it if you haven't tried it. You two gonna talk about it or do it? Well, where shall it be today? How about the West Wing? The West Wing it is. Hey, Rosie. Uh -huh. uh, don't wait up for us. How far do you think you're going? If I'm lucky, she'll run out of gas. Uh-huh. We'll park somewhere. Uh-huh. If he has to fight for his honor, you've got it made. I'll see you later. September. Isn't see, stop complaining. I'll take my business somewhere else. Promises, promises. Made this place into a regular sweatshop. And when you're finished with the frame, start working on a chair. <laughs> Oscar Robertson called. He'll be here tonight. Great. Have you heard from Wilt? Yeah, he's coming in tomorrow morning. How's the sale of tickets going? Every seat's gone. <laughs> now we're selling standing room. You're kidding. I still can't believe it. An all-star game out here in the country? You'll believe it when you see over 3,000 people show up for that game tomorrow night. Well, I have no idea it was this kind of place. Oh, it's just grew. What did you start with? Oh, a few acres. We could accommodate about 50 people. Oh. And now? Oh, about a thousand. Say, do you want to see the basketball court? I was hoping you would ask me that. You two go on ahead. I'm going to call home and see how the kids are doing. Well, you should have brought them up with you, Mrs. Twyman. Well, if I'd known it was anything like this, I would have. Mel. Yeah. If you've got a thousand, how will you be able to draw three thousand? Oh, they'll be coming over from the other hotels, and some of them are driving up from New York. All the work you've done, and putting out 30 guys for a couple of days, how much is that costing you? Uh, I haven't kept track. Oh, I'm so glad we didn't bring the kids. <laughs> Did that sound awful? Well, I think I know what you mean. Oh. Just how rough has it been, Cal? Straight? Straight. Sometimes I think I wished it was another woman. Oh, you are a dummy. <laughs> no argument. So why didn't you squawk? Oh, I was too selfish to squawk. What do you mean? Well, there were times especially at the start, and it was rough not having you around, but gradually I began to realize how much everybody was doing. Maurice, fighting every hour of every day. His parents mortgaging their lives. Dorothy, and you. And finally I realized the best way, the only way, for me to help was to keep my big mouth shut. We really have a lot to be grateful for, don't we? Well, I've known that for a long time. 
and let's celebrate that. Fine with me. Milt's staging a big show tonight. No show. Well, just what did you have in mind? You really are a dummy. <laughs> Those guys are really playing some ball. I'll do big jack. Round and shoot. Uh -huh. Thank you. Aren't you going to watch Rosie? I'm not much interested if Big Mo isn't playing. Uh -huh. well, I can play, Rosie. It wouldn't be a game. Huh? You sure this is what she wanted? This is what she wanted for her birthday. And Dr. Walker okayed it, so... If you didn't want to go, why didn't you say so? Because I wanted to. <laughs> of course you did. Now, try to behave yourself. Hi, Rosie. Bye. Hi, Maury. Hi. You look marvelous. I feel better than I look. Mm. Should hope so. Did you ever see such a lousy looking tie? Oh, I huh? don't know. I kind of like that. Now, what does he know? Well, I can tell you that in a minute and a half. Oh, I brought you something. Uh-huh. Why don't you open it? It's an original. Okay, I will. Oh, oh, Maury. Now that's lovely. Uh -huh. Autograph. Look at that M. Yes. You got to be kidding. Who do you think you are? Picasso? Oh, now stop that. Ha. Uh, he's right. I'm not Picasso. Go again, maybe. <laughs> or that guy with one ear. <laughs> How's it go, Jay? Terrible. He'll get used to it. Never. Huh? You like school, don't you? No, but I'm getting used to it. Where's Julie? She's visiting Grandma. Oh. Hold it. Any basketball fans here? I am. I like football. What do Julie like? Baseball. <laughs> Who knows what an air ball is? Sure, it's when a shot doesn't hit anything. Right. And what's the real shot? It's when it hits the rim and doesn't go in. That's right. Now, your father, when it comes to feeding me, is the rim shot and air ball champion of all time. Come on. I got scars on my lips to prove it. <laughs> you want to try it, Lisa? Sure. Uh, that's what I call a clean dunk shot. <laughs> Now wait, I got teeth. Let me use them. Okay. You taking notes? Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. More. And the apprentice program is working very nicely. Good. What else have you been doing? Well, my job takes up most of my time, but I manage to relax once in a while. Doing what? Well, Gladys and I, you remember her? We take in a show occasionally, and I visit my parents a couple of times a week. I don't have too much free time. Don't you have a fella? Sure. I see him every Saturday and Sunday. Daddy, I know you don't mean to, but you make me a little uncomfortable. That's a nice thing to say. Oh, I enjoy your visits. You know that. But with your work and flying out and back every weekend, it seems to me you don't have much time for anything else. What else is there? Well, it's not as if we were... I, you know what I mean? We're engaged. We have never got to that, did it? Maurice, have I ever tried to tell you how to live your life? That was one of the nice things about you. 
Do me a favor, will you? Don't tell me how to live mine. As long as you live it, Daddy. I do. My way. Dr. Walker wants me to get Mo ready for some tests. I guess they're going to keep testing me until the damn rabbit dies. St. Francis for that fundraising lunch. Aren't you playing in Salt Lake tonight? I'll be back in time. You're in great shape. How is that going to make you look sick? Won't be the first time, will it? Uh. Hey, um, say hello to Dorothy when she gets in this afternoon, all right? Okay. How's the big old these days? Great. Always asks about you. Tell him if you got nothing better to do, to drop by this afternoon. We'll wrap a while, okay? You like that? I'll call. Him. See you tomorrow. Okay. You've been doing great, Big O. I try, Big Mo. Hey, Dorothy, you know Oscar Robinson is one of the best in the business. That's not saying much for the business, is it? Oh, don't be modest with me. I've seen you play. You're having a great season. The referees are killing us. Do you know they cost us eight games this season? Well, how many games have you lost? Eight. <laughs> You're playing the Celtics tonight. Yeah, but it's not them I'm worried about. It's the referees. <laughs> hey, I better get over to the arena. Can I, uh, drop you somewhere, Miss Clark? Oh, no, thank you, Oscar. I think I'll stay a while. You better take him up on it, Dorothy, because I have to have therapy in a few minutes. Okay. See you tomorrow. Take it easy, Big Mo. You too, big old. But now in the Celtics, okay? Sure thing, man. Sure huh? thing. Bye. He was he was in therapy when Jack called this morning. Do they give it to him twice a day? No. That was just an excuse for you to give me a lift. I don't understand. Well, for months now, almost every time I've visited, he's arranged to have one of you fellows here. Casey, Willis, Wilt. I've met almost the entire league. Still don't get it. Well, he doesn't realize that I know what he's doing. Maury is trying to find a fellow for me. That's the sort of thing he'd do. Where's Jack been all afternoon? Well, he flew over to Pennsylvania today. Another fundraising luncheon. He'll be back in time for the game. I don't know how he does it. Oscar, why does he do it? I don't know. In all these years, he has never wavered. As if what he's done for Maury was the most natural thing in the world. Now, to take that on, along with his family and his career, why? I don't know. Now, you've known Maury and Jack for a long time. You must have wondered about it. Never wondered about it at all. Oh, come on, Oscar. You're not being honest. 
You're a sensitive man. You must have thought about it. No, I never did. Because if I had ever wondered why Jack did it, I'd have to wonder why I didn't. And then I'm going to lack her a bunch of pictures of Jack to give to his son for Christmas. Jay's going to love that. He'd like it better if Jack was going touchdown, though. <laughs> You think that table is high enough? It looks just right to me. Not to me. That table is supposed to be 36 inches high, right, Sid? So? So it doesn't look 36 inches high. So it will when I put the casters on. So I'll keep my big mouth shut. Promises, promises. Sidney, it looks just fine. I know that. Tell him. Whenever I see my television set on that table, I will think of you. And when that table crashes and breaks your set, you think of him. <laughs> <laughs> Maury, I'm sorry. But I'm going to have to get started. It's a long drive back to New York. Okay, ma'am. Sydney, I'll see you next week. That'll be nice. Do you want to go back to your room? No, I'm going to stay here and work. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. That's a girl. Yeah. The airlines don't fly, so she drives all the way down here. That's what I call nice. Nice. Miraculous. He doesn't drive, Sid. Sid, would you wheel me to the terrace, please? Are you out of your mind? It's freezing out there. Wheel me, Sid. Look, you may be an Eskimo, but I'm not. Sidney. Can we go back in? Over to the edge. Oh, good news at last. You're going to jump. <laughs> Miami Beach, this isn't. You're a nut. did we accomplish by all this? A little fresh air is good for you, sis. Uh -huh. Now he's making prescriptions like a doctor. I'd like to call in Dr. Killian from St. Elizabeth's for consultation. Is it that serious? Not today. Pneumonia usually isn't. Under normal circumstances, we can handle it. But it's been three days now. You can do something, can't you? I think so. But we'll have to handle it differently than with an ordinary patient. We have to be careful not to overburden his heart. I'll get Killian and his team over here right away.
you're going home. Okay. You look whipped. Earl the Pearl ran my tail off last night. You ought to get more sleep. Oh, I get enough. Didn't last week. When I was sick. How would you know? I wasn't that far gone. You were around. I heard you. What were you worried about? I wasn't worried. Just want to make sure they weren't wasting any of our money. How are we fixed for money? Okay. How much we got? You never asked me that before. I'd like to know. Why? Curious? Oh, 30, maybe 40,000. You kidding me? Don't get excited. It doesn't last very long. Where would that money go with something happen to me? Nothing is going to happen to you. But if it did, what are you expecting to happen? Who knows? Who knows? I could get hit by a truck. The first time I see a truck out in that hallway, we'll talk about it, okay? Jack? Hmm? Can I make a will? I don't think so. Why? Because you're my guardian. Hell no. That has nothing to do with it. To make a will, you have to be a sound mind. And you're nuts. Do I have to have a lawyer? Or can I write one out myself? Rosie, why isn't Mo in physical therapy? Oh, well, since his pneumonia, Dr. Walker has stopped it. He's somewhat slower coming back than most people would be. But he keeps busy doing something. Right now, he's over in the children's wing visiting. Okay. I'm going to go and get him. Show me how to do a dunk shot. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll practice the war tomorrow. Okay. Okay?
It's the right time to go. I've had 11 pretty good years, you know. No. Great years. I didn't think you'd notice. What are you going to do? I haven't thought about that yet. Most of the guys are working on something while they're playing. Moonlighting in the off-season. Making plans. But you've been so busy budding in the buying business, you haven't had time to make preparations for your retirement. Have you, Jack? Oh. They're giving me a night that last game. I certainly hope so. The least they could do. It'll be a great night for you, Jack. For us. What do I have to do with it? I want you to come. The arena? Mm-hmm. Forget it. Dr. Walker okay then? And I want you to be there. No chance. Mo. Jack, don't ask me to do it. I don't want to be willing to that arena with all those people watching me. You make a deal and then back out? What do you? You once said, how will I ever be able to thank you? And I said, I would tell you. And now I've told you. And you back out. When's the game? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the lineup of the Warriors. Now, to present our Cincinnati Royals. At guard, Adrian Smith. Also at guard, the big O, Oscar Robertson. Why, look, Rosie. The suit fits fine. If you don't look any better, we have to do plastic surgery. <laughs> Will me in while they're introducing the players. Ain't nobody else know it's me. Oh, I don't be a backseat driver. Now, with a deep regret, and I am sure all of you, all of the players, and fans everywhere, share with me. May I introduce for the last time at full Jack Time. <laughs> We're very fortunate tonight. Our sadness at saying goodbye to Jack is greatly relieved by our happiness at being able to say hello once again to Big Mo, Maury Stokes.
up the glasses Is to the glory Still to be Is to the battle And what it's for To ask the best of ourselves Then give much more Is to the heroes Those who move mountains Is to the miracles they make us see. Is to all brothers. Is to all people. 